everyone. Hi, how are we doing? Let me know in the chat if you can hear and see me okay. Um, yeah, I can see that Hammy is here. Hi, Hammy. Welcome back. I feel like it's been a really long time since I've spoken to you on the live stream. How have you been doing? Um, but yeah, I hope that everyone is well and welcome back to another one of our live streams. Um, so yeah, how's everyone's week been? I'm trying to think what's, how's my week been? Ah, I actually had a very good week this week because it was my birthday on Sunday. So I had a very nice day um, with all my friends. Uh, we were still kind of in lockdown, so there were, nothing was open on my birthday, but I was allowed to meet up with people outside. So I had a picnic with my friends in a park, which was very, very lovely and very fun. Um, I also swam in the sea in the morning, which was so cold, but I thought it was just like a really good way to start um, the year of my 25th year, start 25 the right way by running into some cold water with my housemates. Um, and I'm glad that I did it. It was fun. Um, so yeah. And then the day after my birthday, so this Monday, um, was when lockdown basically ended in the UK. So that's really exciting. Um, pubs and cafes and shops have all reopened. You can only go um, out, um, outside. So hospitality is open, but only outside tables. Uh, but still, it's better than lockdown. So that was very, very fun. So let me know in the chat how your week has been. Chan says hello. Over the moon says hi, everyone. Hi, over the moon. Um, so yeah. All right. I think I'm going to wait a few more minutes before we get started with today's topic because um, I just want to wait for a few more minutes for people to get into the chat before we get started. Um, but yeah, I'd love to hear what everyone has been up to. Um, I'm trying to think about UK updates apart from pubs reopening, which is the main thing everyone's been talking about. Um, I was saying to a student today that whilst it is really um, good to have pubs open again, it's great, um, it's not the same as it used to be because we all knew that they were going to be opening on this date for quite a long time. Like the government announced it um, maybe like a few weeks prior. And so obviously like all the tables and stuff got booked up really, really quickly. So now if you want to go to the pub, you have to book ahead of time by maybe a few days. Um, you have to give everyone's names, your number, your email address. You get given a time slot and it's usually only about two hours. So it's like the most organized drink that I've ever had. <laughs> um, so I am looking forward to the future uh, time when going to the pub will be a bit more of a relaxing occurrence again, where you can just go, oh, do you want to go for a drink? Yeah, sure. And just kind of show up. But um, until that point, um, this will definitely be better than nothing. So, yeah. All right, I think let's get started with today's topic because there's a fair amount to talk about. So, as everyone voted in the poll on our YouTube channel, on our community page last week, Today's topic that we're going to be talking about is um, British stereotypes. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take you through different British stereotypes. I'm going to tell you a little bit about them, maybe where the stereotype comes from, and then I want us to guess whether we think that it's true or false. And I'll reveal what my opinion is. So I think let's get started. So let me open the presentation. Ah, before I do that, I need to move my, the chat window over so that I can see what everyone's saying. Okay. Do, all right, here we go. Right, I'm going to pop myself down here. 
Okay, let's get started. So, the first stereotype is British people are polite. So, this is a very famous British stereotype um, that you probably have heard a lot of. Um, the, basically, the idea is that British people have very good manners, the being polite is very important to us. Um, and I think ex famous examples of this um, is that compared to maybe our European neighbours, we say please, thank you, and especially sorry a lot more. Um, I think like the a, a classic British stereotype would be like a bumbling Hugh Grant type man who's like saying, oh, I'm so sorry, oh, thank you, I'm so sorry, um, a lot. So, um, yeah, there's this kind of gentleman stereotype that I've heard of before. Um, even some of my students have described um, England as like the gentleman's country. Um, I think that might be like a stereotype in Korea from a lot of like old movies. Um, so, yeah, I think that the origin of this like polite gentleman um, stereotype comes from a historic British identity um, way, way back in like um, maybe like the 1200s or something um, when there was knights and princesses and kings and queens and there's this whole idea of chivalry which was basically a code and conduct of behaviour. It's kind of got, it's kind of, it definitely has like sexist undertones because it was about how men and women interacted and it was about men kind of being a knight in shining armour for these fair princesses who couldn't possibly look after themselves. But I think that this kind of old characterization has morphed into um, the newer stereotype of British people being very polite. So I want everyone now to guess in the chat box window, do we think that this stereotype is true or false? Beatrice says hello. Hi Beatrice, welcome back. And she says that this is true. Chan says that manner makes a man or a kingsman. I'm not sure what they're referring to here, but I'm guessing you think it's true. Would anyone else like to make any guesses on whether this stereotype is true or false um, before I reveal my opinion so the all these like trues and false is just my personal opinion so i'm not going to state it totally as fact but yeah anyone else over the moon says i went on a trip to london and many many people helped me while i had trouble finding my hotel well that does sound very polite that's good i'm glad that you had a, a good experience in london over the moon Anyone else want to guess before I reveal my opinion? All right, so I think that it is, oh, bear with, false. Um, so I know a lot of you guys just said it was true, but in my opinion, um, I think the politeness it's kind of, it depends on the individual. I think there's loads of rude people and polite people in Britain. And it's more about your individual personality um, and kindness rather than all of us being polite. I also think that everyone can be polite and rude um, just depending on what mood you're in. I know that sometimes I'm very, very polite and then depending on my mood, I could potentially be a bit ruder. Um, I also think that politeness is relative to cultures. So what is polite in the UK might be seen as either over the top or impolite in other countries. Um, a good example of something like this is leaving food on your plate. And I can't remember now off the top of my head which country thinks what, but I think that, I think maybe it's in, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think maybe in Japan it's polite to leave food on your plate or it's the total opposite and I, I can't really remember. But like I think in the UK it's impolite to leave food on your plate. You're meant to eat everything you're given. But then in other countries um, it's polite to leave food. I think in Japan it is polite to leave a little bit of food on your plate. 
because it shows that the food was like so good that you couldn't finish it so like I think there's no right or wrong and it's just relative to the culture that you're in Beatrice says that almost every British person I talk to online are very friendly and polite well I'm glad that's really good um, but perhaps lots of other people from different countries would also be polite um, and friendly online as well Okay, let's move on to the next stereotype. So stereotype number two is British people drink a lot of tea. So I'd love to see your thoughts in the chat window. Let me know whether you think this is true or false. Um, One of the most famous, this is one of the most famous British stereotypes, I think, um, is that we drink a lot of tea. And this comes from the fact that tea was a really large import in the British Empire from India and China. Um, So originally tea was produced as a luxury product in the 17th century. So it was only drunk by very, very posh, rich people. However, later on down the line um, in the 19th century, There were lots of cheap imports from India, from colonial India, um, which made the consumption of it a lot cheaper during the second half of the 19th century, which made it more of like an everyday household item. So do we think that tea, that every, the tea is very, very popular or everyone drinks tea in the UK? Sun says true. Chan says definitely true, I think. Beatrice thinks it's true. Over the Moon says absolutely true. And Ji Wu says true in my experience. Also welcome everyone that's just joined the chat. Um, just to catch you up, because I can see a lot of people have come in a little bit late. So just to catch you guys up. Today we're talking about five British stereotypes and whether they're true or false. And the second one is, is it true that we all drink a lot of tea? And in my opinion, the answer is, True, yes, you guys are right. Um, I think this is this stereotype is absolutely spot on. Um, obviously not every single British person likes tea. I'm sure there's lots of people that don't. But culturally, it is very important. Um, and I think everyone has tea like in their cupboard, like it's just something in every British person's cupboard. Um, there was a survey done in 2017 and it found that almost 75% of people who drank tea daily had at least two cups of tea a day. And research from a similar time showed that the UK had the 12th largest tea consumption per capita in the world. Um, And other hot drinks are also popular, such as coffee. Um, But yeah, I think that tea is just like something that we find very comforting. Um, like for example, if someone is upset or something and they come around your house, you're like, you make them a cup of tea or if someone's even sick, you'll probably make them a cup of tea. It's, we drink it in the morning, we drink it in the evening. It's just, yeah, an absolute British staple. Um, all right, let's move on to stereotype number three. So... The next British stereotype, which I don't know if you guys would have heard of or not, is British people have bad teeth. So what do we think about this stereotype? Do we think it's true? Uh, The Natomika just said, I'll put the kettle on. You can hear this a lot, I guess. Ah, so this is back about tea again. Um, Yeah, I think that's definitely a very common phrase in the UK um, of popping the kettle on. So if you can pop the kettle on, is something that's said a lot. Also, another thing is if you have like a workman around your house, like say like a plumber or an electrician or something like that comes around to do something in your house, you'll probably make them a cup of tea. It's just the polite thing to do for a guest, I suppose. So yeah, we love tea. Um, Over the Moon says, are you a tea person? I'm going to go back a slide. Um, Am I a tea person? Uh, Yes, I am. I think I'm more of a coffee person, it has to be said, although I don't actually handle caffeine very well, so it's often to my detriment, um, but I love coffee. 
Um, but at the same time, like, I think a good cup of Earl Grey is my favourite and I find it very comforting, maybe with a biscuit as well. If I want a hot drink that hasn't got too much caffeine in it, I'll drink tea. Also herbal teas, they're so delicious, like lemon and ginger tea is really, really nice and it makes you feel a lot better if you're feeling a little bit poorly. Actually, I've got a good recipe that I'm going to share with you guys quickly. So... Um, if you're ever feeling like a, like a little bit sick, like maybe your throat kind of hurts or you've got a stuffy nose and you feel like a cold is coming on, a tea that I make that totally kind of gets rid of those symptoms is um, you chop up some fresh ginger, chop up slices of lemon, put them in a pan of boiling water and boil it for like five to 10 minutes, making sure that the lemon and the ginger are infusing into the water. Then at the very end, add some turmeric powder, which is like a yellow spice that will stain everything you own, but it's very, very good for you. And then also a teaspoon of honey as well. If you make that drink, it will make you feel totally better straight away. So there is a tip for you guys. Okay, now let's move on to um, stereotype number three, which is British people have bad teeth. So what do you guys think? Do you think this is true or false? Um, a common American joke about British people is that we have really bad teeth. So if you watch American TV shows, you'll often see parodies of British people with very brown, yellow, crooked teeth. Um, and yeah, I don't know where this stereotype comes from, to be honest. Um, I think it comes from the, the fact that Americans have um, a very particular um, view on how teeth should look. Like there's a thing of like, Hollywood white teeth, so very straight, very whitened teeth. They think that this is healthiest and that um, the appearance of your teeth is very, very important. Um, whereas maybe we don't have that as much in the UK. But do you think it's true? Do you think we have terrible teeth? Also, maybe all the tea and coffee we drink might stain our teeth, to be fair. <laughs> um, Beatrice says, it depends. Some famous people have bad teeth. I, yeah, I do think more British actors probably have more, um, well, I don't know if they have bad teeth, they just have less white teeth than their American counterparts. Um, Chan says he's never heard of the stereotype. Sin thinks it's 50-50. Um, and the Natomika says that we have gaps between our teeth. <laughs> Some people do. Um, so I think that this stereotype is false, um, especially these days. I think that maybe in the past, dentistry in the UK wasn't um, as important, but nowadays um, I think people take very good care of their teeth. Um, also, I think that the American idea of what your teeth should look like is all about appearance, so being straight and white. And we don't have that as much in the UK. Like we don't, not everyone gets braces, not everyone whitens their teeth, only some people do. However, I don't think that means that our teeth are bad. It just means that they don't look a certain way. Whereas I think that our actual dental health in the UK is fine. It's good. <laughs> um, but yeah, I do think, however, that drinking a lot of tea, it will stain your teeth. So maybe there's some truth into it. So I agree with Sun actually. Maybe it is like 50-50. Okay, next British stereotype is British people lack emotion. So I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the expression a stiff upper lip, um, but this is an expression often used to describe British people and it basically described, describes us as being reserved and unemotional. Um, this is particularly like a determined attitude in the face of hardship. So this kind of stereotype comes about from um, the wartime British attitude of, I don't know if you guys would have heard of keep calm and carry on, which was like a slogan used in World War II 
to kind of um, raise the morale of the British people. Um, and yeah, it's kind of the idea that British people in tough times um, don't express emotion, get on with things and just keep going. Um, and it's kind of a type of uh, a attitude that's encouraged even these days by the government. Um, maybe I think it was kind of invoked a little bit even during the pandemic of them being like, come on, we're the British, we will keep going, it's fine, like blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. So yeah, do you think it's true though? Do you think that British people actually really do lack emotion and we're very stoic and determined or is this just kind of like an idea that's promoted but might not necessarily be true let me know what you think in the chat box before i reveal my opinion chan says i guess it's true claire says british people may think it's polite or wise not to show feelings as in victorian dramas very good claire yes so this is totally where this like stiff upper lip kind of attitude comes from it's very very old-fashioned um i think yeah it's definitely rooted in wartime british identity um i also think that yeah back in the victorian times and in history showing emotion was kind of seen as rude and like something you shouldn't do in public so i think that also encouraged um this kind of idea over the moon said maybe it's true and the Natomika says, false. I think they're just reserved. Nice. Well, I think that this used to be true or it used to be encouraged to not show your emotions. However, I think nowadays the stereotype is false. Um, I think that everyone has emotions. Um, I think that maybe British people, in more so in the past, were encouraged not to express them. I think nowadays we're encouraged to express ourselves more, which I think is a good idea. I think not expressing your emotions is a really terrible idea because it just means that you push them down and don't deal with them and then they come out in weird ways. Whereas if you just say how you feel, say how you feel when you feel it, you'll feel much better afterwards. So I'm glad that Nowadays, people are more encouraged to actually express their emotion. Um, I think this stereotype is kind of true in that we're less direct about our emotions. But I think that that also kind of depends on the person a little bit as well these days. So it's less that we all don't express our emotions and more that some people are better at it than others. Beatrice says, I think it's true, but nowadays more people are taking care of mental health. Exactly, Beatrice. I totally agree with you. I think that it was more true in the past, more encouraged in the past, but nowadays, because we have a better awareness of mental health, more people are trying to express their feelings, which I think is brilliant. All right, we are on to our fifth and final British stereotype. Oh, in one minute, because Ji Wu has said something. Ji Wu says, lacking emotion is kind of a strong expression, but compared to Americans, British people seem more easily, uh, seem to keep calm more easily. Um, yeah, I think that maybe compared to other countries, we may seem more reserved um, in general, but I'm not that reserved as a person and I'm very, very British. So I do think that it does depend on the person. And also maybe because we have these preconceived stereotypes of British people, um, we expect them or people expect us to be more reserved and kind of look for that. And it's the same for Americans. We expect Americans to be more expressive. So when we are, that kind of confirms our biases so we notice those examples more than we notice the examples of americans who are more quiet and the reverse for british people we expect british people to be reserved so we take note when they are because it confirms our bias and then when we meet maybe more expressive british people we don't remember that because it doesn't confirm our biases i hope that made sense um but yeah i do think it's slightly personal 
Um, the Natomika says, think about how creative British people can be in swearing. Good point. Very true. That should have been one of my stereotypes. Um, it's not on here, but another stereotype could be that we like to swear. And that is definitely true. I think that um, British people are very creative when it comes to swear words, which I like. I like that aspect of us. <laughs> Um, Chan asks, what is um, being reserved? And that's a good question. So being reserved means um, being quiet and calm, not express expressing or showing your feelings. So just very like that, um, basically. And Minnie says, indeed, it depends on the individual. Many of my British friends are pretty good at expressing themselves, maybe better than me. Very good, Minnie, I agree. All right, I think let's move on to our final British stereotype. British people are antisocial abroad. This is my favorite one out of the five. Um, so contrary to stereotype number one, that we're very polite, there is another stereotype, I think mainly within Europe, but correct me if I'm wrong, um, the British people behave very badly when we're on holiday. So the stereotype is that usually when we go to like southern European countries that are very hot and sunny and very popular among tourists, such as Spain, Greece, um, where else is popular? Turkey, I think is quite popular. Um, Croatia is becoming more popular. All these lovely hot and sunny countries um, that when we go on holiday to these places, we behave very antisocially um, to the locals. Usually, um, this bad behaviour is related to drinking. So I guess the stereotype is that British holidaymakers go to these countries, get very, very drunk, act the fool, and are not very nice to the local inhabitants and cause lots of issues. Um, so this stereotype kind of um, reminds me of like, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of lads or lad holidays. So a lad uh, is a British word for a usually young man who likes to um, spend time with his friends, goes out drinking, can act quite antisocially, has a very specific kind of rude sense of humour maybe is um, rude to women as well, kind of quite sexist often, um, trying to pull lots of women. Um, so there's this thing called like lad holidays, which is where a big group of young British men will go on holiday um, and just get really drunk and act foolish and antisocial. So do we think this is true? Do we think that British people are antisocial on holiday? Ah, hello to Foodie Yeah. Welcome to the live stream. Foodie Yeah says, long time no see. Yeah, long time no see. Welcome back. Um, Beatrice thinks it's 50-50 because of drinking. Um, and Chan says, lads, question mark. Um, so I'll repeat my definition, but a lad is basically a young man who likes to go drinking um, and acting very um, loud and maybe a bit obnoxious with his friends in public. Maybe go to lots of football games, these kinds of things. Um, so what do we think? True or false? I think I've given, kind of given the answer away a little bit in my explanation. But um, I think that this stereotype is true. <laughs> um, sadly, it is true. I like to think I've never done this, but I think in general, there are large amounts of British people that when they go on holiday, I think it's something about not being in your own country, which means they feel like they can go a bit more like crazy and wild. But to be honest, I also think it's because our drinking culture is quite excessive within the UK. But I think when you're in your own country, it's less noticeable because we're all kind of doing the same thing. It's more socially acceptable in a way um, and it's your country so it's less disrespectful because it's your culture but then when you go and do the same level of excessive drinking in countries such as Spain where they have a much more relaxed drinking culture where they just like to enjoy 
a few small beers with friends, have nice conversation. They're a lot more chill. When we come with our kind of drinking culture to into their country and do what we do at home there, and maybe a little bit more, um, I think that's where the, the problem is. So yeah, whoops. <laughs> um, um, uh, the Natomika says, only when drinking is involved, some people not at all. Of course, yeah, no, this isn't every Britain. All these stereotypes, if I say they're true, it's still not every British person, but it is a fair amount or a certain group of people that, you know, are letting the side down. Um, but yeah, when drinking is involved, I think we can get a little bit carried away. Um, and Minnie says, no way. Now I'm getting curious about the source of this article. Again, it must be individual stuff. Well, yeah, this is kind of more like common knowledge, these stereotypes, rather than there being any particular source. Um, there's like a phrase called Brits Abroad um, that refers to this kind of thing. But if you Google it, um, it will come up in any newspaper. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely like a general, like um, common stereotype about British people. Um, Over the Moon says, do you think it's related to taking a gap year? Um... I don't actually think it is, to be honest, because I think that this stereotype is about any kind of British holiday. So I think that British people on their gap years, which is basically, for those of you who don't know, a gap year is where British students take a year off in between finishing college, sixth form college, and going to university. They take a year off to go travelling. Um... And there's probably some antisocial behaviour and drinking involved in that. There definitely is. But I think that um, that kind of heavy drinking and this kind of behaviour is involved in other types of holidays as well, not just gap years. So I think it might happen on a gap year, but it's not necessarily related, if that makes sense. Um, Beatrice says, is it true that some British people drink beer at breakfast? Um, Not often, not commonly. Um... Not, I wouldn't personally drink beer at breakfast. I might have like a mimosa, which is um, fizzy wine and orange juice. But um, I don't think British people often drink at breakfast time. Uh, We don't drink that much, but maybe on holiday we might because we're on holiday. So we haven't got any work to do later in the day if we're enjoying ourselves. But um, not in general, not every day. (laughs) Um... I think the earliest that we drink is probably lunchtime. But even then, that would have to be at the weekend, surely. Um, Jiwoo says, fairly similar to Korean drinking culture. Yes, I've heard this. I've heard that um, Korean and British drinking culture is quite similar, quite heavy. Um, Joshua Lee says, as we're kind of talking about drinking, um, I've got to drink a pint of Guinness. Yeah, crack one open. It is a Friday night after all. And I may as well. Maybe that's something we should start doing. We could have drinks together um, in the live stream. Probably not, as it's only like 2pm in the UK. But you guys should definitely, if you want to. Um, Beatrice says, some Brazilians drink Coke uh, at breakfast time. So unhealthy. Yeah, that's a lot of sugar early in the morning. Um, I think I just drink coffee um, in the morning. But yeah, gosh, starting the day with a a Coca-Cola, that would be pretty intense. I would definitely have quite a big sugar high and be extremely hyper if I did that. Okay. Now, okay, before we do our mini quiz, let's do some vocab. So, the first piece of vocabulary that I have for us today is a phrase that we learned earlier. So, I'm going to test your guys' memory, see if you can remember it. And it is stiff upper lip. So, what did this expression mean? Can we remember? So can we remember, what did stiff upper lip mean? I will help you out with an example sentence, which is, um, she managed to keep a stiff upper lip even while everything was falling apart. So can we remember, what did stiff upper lip mean? Ah, Beatrice has got it. 
Anyone else? So Beatrice has said, stay calm and carry on. Very good. Anybody else? Chan says, not show their feelings. Claire says, stiff upper lip means reserved British people. Good. Nice. Well done, guys. Over the moon says, hide feelings, lack of emotion. Foodie, yeah, says, holding back. Yes, good. Well done, everyone. You've all got it. So, yeah, it's a calm and determined attitude in a difficult situation. Keep calm and carry on. All right, fabulous. Our next one I also mentioned earlier. So, this is another memory test. What is a lad? Can anyone tell me what is a lad? Uh, in an example sentence, you might say, he was a bit of a lad until he settled down. Anyone? Claire says it's a boy, which you're not wrong. So um, the original meaning of a lad is literally just a young boy, but there's kind of like a, a more specific meaning in British English that's a little bit different. Foodie Air yeah, says Ladbrook, which I believe that's a betting shop. I'm not even entirely sure. Um, the Natomika says a young male who is reckless. Nice, very good. Uh, Chan says a guy who acts badly after drinking. Beatrice says a young man who's playful. That's quite a nice definition of a lad, um, Beatrice. I like that one. Um, so yes, uh, in British English, a lad is a man who does things that are considered a bit wild. Um, such as getting drunk and trying to have lots of romantic relationships um, with many women. So yeah, that is a lad. Okay, final vocabulary. This is a new one. So you guys are going to have to just guess what this means. And it is an adjective and it's rowdy. So what does rowdy mean? Any guesses? So you might say that British people are very rowdy on holiday when they drink too much. When they drink too much beer with their breakfast, they get very rowdy in Spain. So what do we think rowdy means? Um, the Natomika says likes to argue which is kind of close. Jiwoo says a bit violent. Um, Claire says someone who would make a fuss. Jaywoo says dizzy, I like that one. Um, these are close, kind of. So basically, rowdy means like, um, over the moon says to make a scene. Um, and rowdy just basically means noisy, rough or noisy. So like kind of loud, um, in an unpleasant way. That's what rowdy means. So yeah, in a way you are making a scene for sure. So yeah, British people are rowdy on holiday, <laughs> I would say. Ah, nice. Okay. Are we ready for today's mini quiz? Do, do, do. So. The, oh, let me go back. The mini quiz today is um, guess the country from the stereotype. So in a moment, I'm going to show you um, a stereotype and there'll be three countries to choose from. And I want you guys to type in the chat window and guess which country the stereotype is from. Foodie Air says quiz, quiz, quiz. And Beatrice says, yay, mini quiz. <laughs> um, I just kind of want to say a little disclaimer before we look at these stereotypes is that, and this is true of the British ones as well, that in general, I think stereotypes tend to be a bit false. They sometimes can come from quite an offensive place. So all the stereotypes we're looking at today are just playful and obviously not everyone from these countries will adhere to this stereotype. Um, 
and yeah so this is just a little bit of fun and I hope that we can take it lightheartedly and it's the same with British stereotypes as they're obviously not true for everyone because that would be impossible you can't group together a whole country and say that everyone has this behavior so yeah little stereotype all right um, little stereotype little disclaimer before we get started um joshua lee says i was born to do this i like the confidence all right let's go so the first one is blank are very loud so do people think that americans germans or french people are very loud stereotypically Any guesses? I'm gonna just wait for you guys to guess in the chat box. And I'm gonna try and not say anything to give it away, as I usually do. Uh, Jay Wu says Americans. Beatrice thinks it's Americans. Natomika says Americans. Chan says Americans. Ji Wu says Americans. Foodie yeah says Americans. Joshua Lee says the French. Um, so the answer is, Americans, I think we mentioned this earlier on in the live stream. So stereotypically people say that Americans are loud or louder maybe compared to um, British people. Um, I think um, Foodie Yeah says Flora is attacking Americans. No, I'm not, <laughs> stop. Um, I don't think this is true. Um, I think maybe Americans are more expressive than other countries, but again, it just depends on the individual really, doesn't it? But there's definitely a stereotype that Americans are louder, although I don't think that this is true, obviously. Americans are also very positive, which is great. Um, okay, next one. Blank love to drink beer. So, Germans, Italians, or Dutch people? Who do you think stereotypically loves to drink beer? What do we think? Uh, Chan says about the last one reminds me of Emily in Paris. Yes, it's true. There was a lot of stereotypes in Emily in Paris, which is why I didn't really like it as a as a show because I thought it was a bit. They just did a lot of uh, cliches, which I didn't think was very good. But yeah, um, the Nato Mika says Germans. Beatrice says Germans. Joshua Lee says Germans. Ji Wu says Germans. Foodie says Germans. All right, everyone agrees as Germans, and you are correct. So stereotypically. People say that German people love to drink beer. Um, I'm sure there are lots of German people who hate beer um, or just don't like to drink at all. But I do think that German beer is very, very tasty. And they do have Oktoberfest, so maybe there is some truth to this stereotype. Although Belgian beer is the best beer. Oh my god. Okay, number three. Blank are very polite. Danish people, Swedish people, Canadians. So this is a nice stereotype. We like nice stereotypes. Um, so who do you guys think are also considered very polite as well as British people? The Natamika says Canadians. Anyone else want to make any guesses? Beatrice says Canadians. Anybody else? Uh, Jay Wu also says that they'll go with Canadians. And the answer is... Correct, Canadians. Um, so yeah, as well as the UK, Canadians also get the stereotype of being very kind and polite and saying sorry very often. Ah, Joshua Lee says, I've never heard of that before. Oh, it's a very big stereotype for Canadian people is that they're really, really nice. Um, and to be fair, every Canadian person I've met has been absolutely lovely. So maybe it's true. Okay, number four. Blank are very passionate, which is a weird stereotype if you think about it. <laughs> Don't know who's thinking, thinking one country is more passionate than another one. But anyway, um, is it the Portuguese, 
the Greeks or the Italians, who were considered a very passionate people. J. Wu says Italians. Foodie S says Italians. The Natomika says Italians. G. Wu says the Italians, as does Chan. And the Beatrice also says Italians. So the answer is Italians, yes. So yeah, it's a stereotype that Italians are very passionate. Maybe there's something within their cultural music or something that means people think that they're very passionate. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if the stereotype is true or not. But Italians do have extremely good food, so. Okay, number five. This is a really mean one, um, but this is a very uh, European stereotype. And who lacks humour? Germans, French or Swedish? Um, we don't like the mean uh, stereotypes, but I was running out of ideas. So <laughs> we have this one. Um, uh, about the Italians, Jay Wu says, I can judge that they're passionate by their art. Yes, I think that's true, actually. Um, Jay Wu says the French. Chan says the French. Joshua says Germans. The Natomika says Germans. Beatrice says Germans. G Wu says Germans. Over the Moon says Germans. Michelle Kim says Germans. And you guys are correct. Yes, so stereotypically, I don't think this is actually true. But a very big stereotype in Europe is that German people don't have a sense of humour. But I've had a lot of German friends and I think it's just the German sense of humour is very different to um, other types of humour. They have a very specific humour, so they don't lack humour entirely. They just find different things funny, obviously. Um, and I think there is just a stereotype of German people being serious, but I don't think that's true at all because all of my German friends have been very funny and very lovely. Um, I think maybe it's British people just being like our humour's the best, which is silly. <laughs> but yeah, well done, guys. You did really well. You know the stereotypes pretty well. Good job. Um, all right. That is everything for today's live stream. So before we say goodbye, do you guys have any questions for me? Um... Sorry, a little bit of a technical glitch there. Um, Joshua Lee says, I guess so too. And Jay Wu says, one of my German's friends said, hey, I'm humorous. <laughs> I'm sure they are very humorous, of course. Um, well, yeah, that is everything for today's live stream. I hope that you guys enjoyed it and had fun and learned a little bit more maybe about British people and our stereotypes and about like European stereotypes as well. Um, which are obviously all in good faith, all in good fun, sorry, and um, mostly not very true. But yes, if you keep an eye out on the uh, community page of our YouTube channel, um, there will be a post there with another poll of three more options for next week's live stream. So yeah, please vote there so I get, can know what you guys want to talk about next week. But yeah, I hope you all have a really good weekend and a good week. Um, and, oh yeah, so next week's live stream will not be on Friday because I have holiday. I'm on holiday next Friday, so there'll be no live stream on Friday. Um, but there will be a live stream the following week and potentially a catch-up live stream as well. But I'm not sure when that will be happening yet so uh, there definitely won't be a live stream however next friday so i will see you at the latest the following friday on the 30th but maybe before then as well i'm gonna i'll advertise that on the community page so just keep an eye out there and i'll make an announcement of when the next live stream will be all right have a great weekend guys um <laughs> foodie yeah says no don't go on holiday sorry foodie yeah I, I want to. <laughs> um, I'll be back. I'll be back. Don't worry. Okay. I'll see you guys next time. Just keep an eye out on the community page. All right. Take care. Bye, everyone.